Taking over the game one step at a time Everybody has these dreams of being first in line It may take a little while before we reach the light We just gotta take what we gotta make Transformers was released in 2007 and star Shia LaBeouf as Sam Witwicky who has just bought in his very first car which happens to be Bumblebee and finds himself between a war of the Autobots and Decepticons as they are looking for this item known as the AllSpark which has the power to wipe out the entire human race so it's up to Shia LaBeouf and the Transformers to make sure that that doesn't happen make sure the Decepticons don't find the AllSpark and it'll be awesome and it's Transformers. I mean, what really much can I even say about Transformers that most people don't even know? The first Transformers was a big deal when it came out. In 2007, movies like Spider-Man, The Simpsons movie, Pirates of the Caribbean 3, these were huge movies that were coming out. And unfortunately, I was one of those kids that just didn't see Transformers when it came out. I don't even recall if I saw Spider-Man 3 when it came out, but when I went back to school, I think I was in second grade when, because uh, Transformers came out during the summer, so there was no school at that time. Right when we got into second grade, everybody was talking about Transformers. It was like the biggest thing because when it came to Transformers, there wasn't really anything that it was getting hyped up from before. I mean, yeah, there was the Transformers cartoon show and the toys that a lot of people back in the day loved to play, but it wasn't like this was mo this movie was coming off of something like Spider-Man 3, where that was coming off of Spider-Man 2, which was fucking incredible, and then Pirates of the Caribbean coming off from the first one, and then Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest, and then the Simpsons movie, which is the longest running cartoon ever. So Transformers, in a weird way, kind of came out of nowhere. It was just one of those things where like people were just wondering oh a Transformers movie the same way people felt about how they made a G.I. Joe movie or when they did a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film and man I must have seen that Burger King commercial like at least a thousand times welcome to Burger King can I take your take yeah. a Whopper no cheese no onions uh, extra pickles sir, this is a drive through you need a vehicle I'm fine Dude. Driver too. Oh, come on. Now, here's one thing we really have to make clear, okay? Transformers is not Citizen Kane. It's not Schindler's List. It's not Saving Private Ryan. It's not the Shawshank Redemption. It's a movie about robot cars that fight, and it's fucking awesome. And that's pretty much what you really have to go in with the Transformers films. Like, you can't sit down and expect to be like, oh, Transformers. Hmm. Hmm. You really can't go into Transformers with that kind of pretentious, I call a movie film attitude while you're smoking a cigar, talking about the classics of Citizen Kane or 12 Angry Men. Transformers was made to have fun, and even years later. So having watched this film last night, I was a little bit worried because, you know when you're a kid and you're kind of just oblivious to flaws in films, you know, you think every movie is incredible. Like, I remember thinking Godzilla from 1998 was like the best thing ever until I finally developed a brain. Uh, so yeah, there are many movies where you kind of watch back in the day where you remember very fond memories, but when you look back at it, it's like, yeah, that's a pretty bad film. Transformers is a fun film. There is many issues I have with this film, particularly the subplots, which there are a lot. The plot that I just explained in the beginning of the video is kind of just the synopsis, but there is a lot because of, first off, you know, we got Shia LaBeouf, uh, then we got Josh Duhamel and Tyrese Gibson. And then we got John Turturro, and then we got John Voight and his military subplot. And then we have the analysts. Then we have fucking Anthony Anderson. And then there's Mojo, the drug-addicted dog, and the insanely, insanely annoying parents, which I'm not the only one that disagrees. Many people hate the parents because I hate them so much in this movie. I mean, they even make it clear from the actual film how annoying these characters are. Cover right now. Get over there so fast. Oh dear. Four. It's See, coming off. Count it. Um, this one is uneven. Yeah, probably. This one is wobbly. Paris, very irritating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I take them out? There's actually so many subplots in this film that the Transformers really don't get a lot of screen time. When we first see them, they show up within an hour into the film, and when they show up, it's awesome. That introduction scene where they're all driving and they transform into their real selves, and it's really awesome when Optimus Prime kneels down and he's talking to Sam. I do like Shia LaBeouf quite a bit. Yeah, I think he's gotten way better in recent years, especially with Honey Boy, which was my favorite film of 2019. If you guys have never seen Honey Boy, 
highly recommend you watch that film. And in this film, I think Shia LaBeouf is fine. I think he is likable enough to the point where you kind of want to see more of him. There isn't really anything about his character that's really interesting, except he's just some weird, horny, nervous teenager that says no over and over again. No, 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 no! No, 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 And then you got, of course, Megan Fox, who everybody was drooling over back in 2007. Everybody from, like, first graders to just up above. I mean, Megan Fox was the fucking boner of the month. But unfortunately, Megan Fox, in her big debut film, I mean, this wasn't her first movie. She had a small role in another film, which I don't remember, but this was her big debut film, big star and she is really bad in this film i mean the line delivery that she has is yeah megan fox is also somebody that i think has gotten better with acting over the years but man some of the line deliveries that she has in this film are oh boy oh god i can't even tell you how much i'm not your little bunny same situation that i'm always in because i don't know i guess i just have a, a weakness for hot guys for for tight abs and and really big arms uh, my dad he was a he was a real grease monkey. He taught me all about this. I could take it all apart, clean it, put it back together. But yeah, as I said before, the problem that relies in this film are just the subplots. There are lots. Now look, if you want to have a subplot maybe with just focusing on Shia LaBeouf and maybe have just the subplot with Josh Duhamel and Tyrese Gibson, that's fine because I actually do like the subplot with Josh Duhamel and Tyrese Gibson. I love those characters. But every other subplot is just so pointless, like Anthony Anderson, who is hilarious, and he's funny. But Anthony Anderson has nothing to do with this film other than just to be the comedic relief. Shut up, Grandma! She did it! She did it! She's the one you want! And then also the analyst characters. No reason to have them in the film. John Voight in his military subplot. No reason to be in the movie. John Turturro, who is awesome, and I love John Turturro. No reason for him to be in this movie. If this film would have just focused on Shia LaBeouf, Josh Duhamel and Tyrese Gibson and their military subplot and just the Transformers and have that main focus, then this film would have been 10 times better, but they are focusing on so many things when they could be just showing awesome robot stuff, which is what people want to see. Nobody wants to see any of these dumb, stupid jokes where parents are coming into their kids' rooms asking if they're masturbating. It's just awkward. Okay. For Pete's sakes, you are so defensive. Were you... Masturbating? Judy. Was oh. I master? No, oh, Mom! It, okay? Okay. No, I don't masturbate. That's not something for you it's to bring okay. up. That's a father and son father thing. And son you don't have to call it that word. If that makes you uncomfortable, you can call it Sam's happy time or happy my time. special Mom, alone stop. time. Mom, with Judy, myself. stop. My kick <sighs> but then when it comes to the action sequences, which are awesome, which is something Michael Bay does very well when it comes to practical and also with CGI. The physicality that these actors are doing to make it very believable that they are in this environment is very difficult to do because a lot of people can say, oh, that's just special effects, that's CGI, but man, what they really have to do in order to sell the physicality and make the audience believe that these actors are these characters in this world that is being presented on this big screen is really hard to do. And I think everybody did a really good job, and the action scenes are awesome, especially the last hour, which for every Transformers film, the last hour of almost all the Transformers films are awesome, and the finale in this film is great. Megatron is fucking badass. Give me the cue, boy. Oh, so unwise. Hugo Weaving as Megatron is just awesome. And then Peter Cullen, who has voiced Optimus Prime over the years, even in the original animated show and movie, it's just music to my ears. It's literally the voice that cures all cancer. I am Optimus Prime, and I send this message to any surviving Autobots taking refuge among the stars. We are here. We are are waiting also i cannot forget to mention probably the best part of this film which is unfortunately only like a two to three minute scene which is bernie mac and man just rest in peace to a comedic legend but when bernie mac is in this film the two to three minute scene that he has is fucking great especially not in front of my mammy that's my mammy hey mammy 
Oh, don't be like that. If I had a rock, I'd bust your head, bitch. Same as she deaf, you know? <laughs> but yeah, the visual effects really hold up. Even 15 years later, it is some of the best visual effects that I've ever seen. Yeah, sometimes in the action sequences, it's a lot of quick editing, and sometimes you can't even really tell what is going on. But when the action sequences are good, they're good. And they are filmed very well, and they blend together very well with the actual human characters. I mean, when Optimus Prime grabs onto Megatron when he turns into a jet, and he's going through that building, it's fucking awesome. The fight scenes are great. Not much I could really say about Transformers anymore, other than... It's just a fun film. I think the first Transformers film holds up fairly well. If they would have just ignored some of the useless subplots and maybe just focused on the Autobots with the Decepticons and Shia LaBeouf's character and maybe just Tyrese and Josh Duhamel just for that one subplot without focusing on all the other pointless ones that were just kind of there for dumb comedic relief, then I think this would have been a lot better, but I still have a good time every time I watch it. I'm gonna give Transformers a B plus. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching my reviews. Look forward to more reviews of Transformers coming soon, and I'll see you guys next time in a new video. Peace. Taking over the game one step at a time. Everybody has these dreams of being first in line. It may take a little while before we reach the light. We just gotta take what we gotta make sure that we make it right.